Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is gonna be on protein digestion. So protein is really important, right? Protein gets broken down into amino acids, and these amino acids have all kinds of effects in our body with satiety, stabilizing blood sugar. It's a building block for protein, for our muscles, essentially. And also these amino acids, especially 5-HTP, L-tyrosine, L-theanine, they can become brain chemicals or neurotransmitters such as serotonin and or dopamine and GABA. And these neurochemicals affect our mood, how we think, how we feel, our ability to focus and pay attention. So it's really important that we're eating good quality protein and not only eating it, but making sure we can break it down, digest it, utilize, assimilate, and absorb, right? The whole, the whole expression of you are what you eat, well, that's true to a certain degree if you're breaking that down fully. And we're gonna talk about just a simple couple of signs and symptoms and lab tests you can do to assess how you're breaking down your protein. So number one, signs and symptoms of indigestion. So your stomach's located right about in this area here of your chest on the left-hand side, favoring just a bit. And the stomach's primary goal is to break down protein. And it does that by activating this whole digestive cascade, this whole domino effect of converting pepsin, pepsinogen into pepsin. And it does that with lowering the pH by creating hydrochloric acid. So we have these cells in our stomach called the parietal cells, the same cells that actually help us absorb B12 as well. So if we're not producing hydrochloric acid, there's a good chance we could also be B12 deficient. So keep that in mind, because that can create anemias, thyroid issues, and, and fatigue, and make it hard for your body to create healthy red blood cells that carry oxygen and nutrition to the rest of your body. So again, we have this HCL secretion by our parietal cells in our stomach, and that lowers the pH, and that lowering the pH activates all these proteolytic enzymes, pepsin being the, the biggest one, and that sets the whole domino rally for digestion in the small intestine by stimulating cholecystokinin, which then releases bile salts. Those bile salts emulsify fats. We also have um, this production of lipase and proteolytic enzymes and trypsin and chymotrypsin from the pancreas. So this really sets the whole entire digestive cascade. So we really wanna make sure that we got stomach and protein digestion going. That's the first major domino. So a couple of signs and symptoms here for burping. Burps tend to be a sign of stomach indigestion issues. Again, flatulence or gas on the other end is gonna be a sign more of small intestine and or um, colon issues, typically bacteria, SIBO, or maybe even infections or dysbiosis. So colon to small intestine is flatulence. Stomach tends to be burping. So that's how we kind of figure out if there's a protein issue when we see burping, especially if there's a smell to it as well. Reflux, if we're having that reflux of issue, that can definitely be a sign that we're not breaking down that protein. And there's also a really important infection that we want to rule out anytime we have protein issues, and that is H pylori. This is really, really important because H. pylori is this little uh, bacterial infection. It's a gram-negative bacteria, so it produces a toxin called lipopolysaccharide, and H. pylori stimulates or produces this enzyme called urease, and urease basically will take the urea, which is part of protein metabolism. So we have protein here. Protein sits in your tummy, it gets broken down into urea and nitrogen. And what happens, we have urease, we'll take a lot of this urea and it will break it down into ammonia and CO2. This is important because ammonia has a pH of 11. So if we're putting a pH of 11 in your stomach, guess what that does to the overall pH of where it should be at two or three? It raises it right up, and that could decrease the enzymes, pepsin, from activating and breaking down protein. So H. pylori is really important because of what it has, what it does, and how it affects protein digestion, urea, ammonia, and CO2. And that's why when they're doing H. pylori breath testing, they're looking at CO2 levels, right? Because if that urease is there, it's taking the urea, bringing it to ammonia, and it's taking and increasing CO2 levels via this whole enzyme urease H. pyloric mechanism. So really important. Also, delayed gastric emptying. People know this, they just sit there, they feel like the food just sits in their stomach for a long period of time. They may have even gone to their doctor and been diagnosed with paralytic ileus or um, 
just basically delayed gastric emptying of their stomach and they may be prescribed prokinetics to help move things along better. Especially if you're finding that you, when you take in ginger, that that actually helps improve digestion in the stomach, that's a really good sign that you have delayed gas, gastric emptying in the stomach. Next, if you're having gurgles and bloating, if the food is just sitting there and you're just gurgling, you hear noise, or this, this borborygmy is the technical term, you hear loud noises, there's a good sign there's indigestion in the stomach. Also, excessive bloating too is a really good sign of starting to have a dysbiosis overgrowth. And that bacteria in the tummy can easily take the esophageal sphincter here. That's the sphincter that goes from your stomach here to your esophagus and it can open that sphincter up and allow some of these acids to raise back up and hit the bottom of your throat. So if you're having any burning or refluxing there, um, that could be a problem. Also, do supplements make you feel better? Have you taken HCL and worked it upwards from maybe 500 milligrams upwards and seen an improvement? Do you feel your digestion get better adding hydrochloric acid in? Enzymes, taking high dose proteolytic enzymes, lipase, trypsin, chymotrypsin, etc. Does this improve your digestion? How about taking one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar? Does that have a difference on your overall digestion? If it does, there's a really good chance that there is lower stomach acid, excuse me, there's a really good chance that you're suffering from lower stomach acid and taking these acidifiers and or extra enzymes are lowering that pH, thus helping your digestion. So if you're having a benefit with these products, there's a good chance your pH is too high due to a lack of stomach acid and this may not be the underlying cause. There may be an H. pylori infection, there may be dysbiosis, there may be other issues that are driving it and these are actually covering up the symptom. Although it's great to address this because if we don't have it, we're not gonna break down food and proteins and minerals and such in our, in our tummy as well. So it's good to add those in and that's why part of the 5R program that I create, the second R is replacing or replacing enzymes, acids, and or bile salts so we can break down foods while we're trying to get to the root cause, which may be lifestyle induced, food induced, or even infection induced. So we really want to make sure that we're doing our best to address that. Next, lab testing for protein digestion. A couple of markers that I do use on a standard CBC CMP on your basic blood test. I typically use LabCorp and Quest, but here's some of the markers that I use to assess protein digestion. And when we look at these, we're not looking at like if one's off, that means there has to be a protein digestion issue. We're looking for general trends and we're making notations and the more markers we see out of balance, especially the farther we see out of balance, the more concerned we are that there's a protein digestion issue. Oh, also is this really important sign and symptom that I'm gonna talk about here is look at your fingernails. Your fingernails should have no vertical ridging up and down or horizontal side to side. If you're seeing vertical or horizontal ridging, typically is a sign that you're not breaking down your proteins and or fat well. The first place we look is your stomach and protein maldigestion. Also horizontal, like I said, and look for spots on your fingernails too, the little white spots, spots are a sign of zinc deficiency. And we need zinc to make hydrochloric acid, while on the same side, we need hydrochloric acid to break down zinc. So if you have hydrochloric acid problems, you tend to have zinc problems. If you have zinc problems, you tend to have hydrochloric acid problems. So it ends up being this downward cycle that just gets worse and worse and worse. It's like a cruel joke the body plays on it. And that's why functional medicine doctors are equipped to come in here and really look at the body, look at signs, symptoms, physical tests, um, again, look at blood tests, and they can spot these tests, spot these um, patterns out, and they can provide a, a solution that gets to the root cause and not put people on a proton pump inhibitor, Nexium, um, Prevacid, Prilosec, Omniprazole for life. And these, these drugs cause lots of problems. They create thyroid issues, they create all kinds of mineral malabsorption, uh, osteoporosis, lots and lots of problems. And we need protein for healthy brain chemistry. So I'll even go the extra limb saying if you're on these medications long term, there's a good chance you may even suffer from depression in the long run because you're not making the neurochemicals, you're not digesting the neurochemicals to make healthy brain function, to make you happy and be able to focus and enjoy life. So we need to have good digestion. So lab testing, we have creatinine. Creatinine is a breakdown product of protein. Albumin and globulin are also protein carriers in the blood. We have BUN or blood urea nitrogen, which is another protein, um, protein digestion byproduct of nitrogen, right? Nitrogen is part of the whole uh, protein um, recycling cascade. And then we have total protein in the blood as well.
So we have, these are our functional ranges. So these are our functional ranges. Okay, and functional ranges, basically if here's our pathological range right here, our functional range is the more narrow approach of what we're healthy person, where a healthy person should be. And essentially this whole lab range is made up of 95% of the population. So really standard lab range is only two and a half on one side and two and a half on the other are considered abnormal. But you go to any airport, and you're gonna know that two and a half percent of the population on either side aren't abnormal, right? Or I should say it this way, you're gonna know that 95% of the population isn't normal. We know there's a, we know there's a much higher percent of the population um, or much lower percent of the population that's normal, right? A lot more people are being abnormal today and then normal. We see it with obesity, just how people look and act and their energies and all the prescription drugs people are on that there are less people abnormal every day, but that lab range says 95% have to be normal. So you can see here with creatinine, a good functional marker is anything less than 0.79 mg's per dl is a good sign of potential lack of protein. Also albumin and globulin, you can see four to five on the grams per deciliter, and you can see 2.4 to 2.8 on the grams per deciliter for the globulin. And then bun, you can see 10 to 16 is a pretty good marker, milligrams per dl. If we're going too low on the bun, I automatically think low HCL. If we're going too high, I may think leaky gut and or inflammation. And protein total, anything below 6.9, I start to think low protein, low stomach acid. And the general trend when I'm seeing my patients is we see typically at least two or three of these markers show up out of range. I don't get concerned when one or two show up. I get concerned when two or three or more show up and we start having some symptomatology above. And when we start definitely seeing um, physical signs and symptoms like on the fingernails and the spotting and or hair issues or, and or consistent dry skin, I get concerned. Again, physical signs and symptoms always trump lab tests, all right? Physical signs and symptoms, hair, nails, skin, always trump labs. Again, all my patients, I look at nails, I look at hair, I look at skin, and we look at the blood markers, and we look at overall symptomatology. And if we know there's a digestive issue, a protein digestion issue, we have to at least provide palliative measures to get the protein digestion better, while at the same time we look deeper in what the root causes are. Leaky gut, infections, bacteria, parasites, fungus, stress, lifestyle, hydration timing, meal timing, etc. We want to get to the underlying cause so we can help stimulate healing as much as possible. Again, this is Dr. J here. Like the video if you enjoy it, share it with a friend. If you need more help in helping your digestive issues and your overall health, click on screen, click below. Again, subscribe for more videos coming your way. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great night.